Welcome to KJV Cafe. Thanks for taking time out of your day to listen. Each episode of the cafe is dedicated to studying the Bible verse by verse from Genesis through Revelation. Your host here at the cafe is Bible teacher Clark Covington. Looks like the coffee is hot and ready, so let's get started. Amen. Glory to God. Welcome to the cafe. Welcome to the KJV Cafe podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Amen. Good to be here today. Hopefully you're having a wonderful day, a wonderful week. It is a blessed day at the cafe. It always is here as we get in and study God's word. And after spending several episodes looking at the importance of of the day of rest, the Sabbath day, we are on to the next verse here in Genesis chapter two, verse four. Uh, And it's kind of takes a little turn from just what God had done to maybe why God did it the way he did. Verse four, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And so we see here these generations. This is what happened, when it happened, and it was all by God. And so today what we're looking at, the kind of theme of today's episode, is God working in a certain pattern or sequence. The way that God patterns things in his creation and the way that God may be pattering, uh, patter, pattering, patterning, patterning with an N, patterning things in your life. Amen. Like I said, we're not going to edit that out. We'll just keep it in there. Make sure you're listening because maybe you were already dozing off or drifting off and that brought you back. So what's this guy talking about? Is God creating a pattern in your life? That's what we're talking about. But before we get to his pattern in your life. Let's look at this verse a little deeper. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. So who made the earth and the heavens? The Lord God. When did he do it? In his time. How how long was it stretched out? Over six days. And if we go back to Genesis 1, we can see the pattern in which God was moving. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, And the earth was without form and void. So in the beginning, you have a heaven and an earth created, right? And again, we can look at that as the literal heaven, but more likely it could be the sky. So it could be the heaven as in uh, the first heaven, as I guess the Bible would refer to it as, which is where the birds are in the clouds, or even the second heaven, which would be space, uh, where the stars, the moon, the sun is. And then you have, of course, third heaven where God resides. So we see that this heaven was made, probably the sky, amen, in the space. And you have also the earth being made. And these things were made in that order. And then we see that there was darkness there. So what did God do in verse three? He said, let there be light. And there was light. By the way, God simply spoke it and it occurred. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. So now he's dividing light from darkness, creating day and night. Amen. We see that in verse five, that God called the light day and the darkness night. So do you see a certain pattern, a certain sequence happening here? We see that God is creating, and then as he's creating, he is creating order, right? So he's he's got the, the, the light. He said, this is good. Let me separate it from darkness. And he says, okay, this light is going to be day, and this darkness is going to be night. And he separates those two. And then we have, of course, the ferment in the midst of the waters. He divides the waters. He ends up bringing in the dry land. Amen. He uh, right, uh, right around that time, he creates in verse eight, the evening and the morning uh, were the second day. And God said, let the waters of the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. That's verse nine of Genesis one. And so God is speaking and things are happening. And this is a pattern that happens throughout all the Bible from Genesis, uh, the very beginning of Genesis, like chapter one, where we are here uh, temporarily before we move back to chapter two, all the way to Revelation when Jesus Christ himself speaks the end of all his enemies. Okay, so the verse here referring to Revelation 19, 11 through 18 and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that saw, sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man know, knew but he himself. 
And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That's that's the word. That with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, that be the sky there, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And Revelation 19, 11 through 18 is Jesus Christ coming and avenging uh, the saints, amen. And he's avenging them, his enemies, with the word, that two-edged sword, that word that he speaks. And so we see Jesus in the creation account in Genesis 1. We see Jesus at the very end of the Bible, Revelation 19, just a few chapters before the Bible is completely through. What do we see? We see him speaking the word. And so we understand that God's got great power in speaking. He simply speaks the word. He simply thinks it and it is done. Amen. That's all that, that needs to happen. No, no more than that. He, he says, do this. He says, do that. And he does it in a certain order. And when we come back from the break, we're going to take our text verse and see how that relates to our lives, how God may sequentially or may orderly or, or may divinely order our lives in a certain way that we should mind him and what he calls us to do. Hang in there. We'll be right back. You're listening to KJV Cafe. We encourage you to look us up on your favorite podcast app and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Now let's get back to some more in-depth Bible study. Amen. Welcome back. Here we go. Getting into the personal application. We talked a little bit about how uh, Genesis 2-4 helps us to understand God created everything in his fashion. I'll read the verse again, Genesis 2, 4. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. So this is the generations of the heaven and the earth. This is what God did when he did it in the day that God did it. And we see here that he was very orderly in the creation of the earth and the creation of the sky, creation of all these things, including us. And so now we have to ask the question, you know, if God is all powerful, if he can speak things into existence, right? Uh, and God is uh, all, all knowing and wise and, and, and all of these things, attributes that we know of God, all the O words, uh, omnipresent and omniscient and so forth. If God is all these things, what does it mean to us personally as we live our lives as Christians? You know, what, what's some of the applications that come along with that? I mean, first of all, in the church, you know, God has an order to his church, amen? Uh, I've been fortunate to spend a lot of time in uh, different churches, and not, not just going as a member to different churches, but visiting churches for revival meetings, and also, especially with the radio ministry, this is now a podcast, but once upon a time, we were on many radio stations, uh, and in the radio world, um, and by the way, nothing nothing scandalous happened, we're just not on them because you have to pay to be on them, and it's, it can get expensive, and so uh, the podcast seems to be where people are listening, so I love the radio uh, ministry, and I love those uh, radio stations, Lord knows, but um we're now mostly podcasting and YouTubing and all the rest. Uh, sounds like snow tubing, but you, I'm YouTubing. I'm not snow tubing. Uh, but in the radio ministry, you know, they'd have share And so every year, twice a year, especially in Clayton, North Carolina, we'd go up there uh, to, to a church, uh, WHPY, Fellowship uh, Baptist Church there in Clayton, North Carolina. And we would uh, do the, uh, what is it called? Um uh, share where you're raising, I just said it, I don't know why I lost that, but, uh, you know, where we're raising money to help with the radio ministry. And, you know, you would just see so much similarities. There'd be a bunch of preachers talking at lunch or afterwards and, you know, just talking, you know, chewing the cud, you're on about a four hour shift there or whatever it may be, you know, just learning about each other. And you learn about these ministries and they're very similar. And the church is very similar. And, uh, I've heard it said before, 
that, you know, if you meet an, a brother and a brother and sister in Christ, you know, they're not a stranger for long because you both have the Holy Spirit living within you and you, you just have that great fellowship. And, and there's a lot to that. So God created everything in order. And I've had this thought before recently, especially that, you know, some, sometimes I'm just thinking, you know, there's probably like a really good church an awesome, you know, God fearing, God loving church, uh, in most areas, you know, that maybe we don't even know about, or maybe you do know about, but, uh, you know, it's just, again, getting to know these pastors and their heart and getting, you know, sometimes online I'll see, uh, you know, people I've never heard of and they're singing a gospel song by a piano and I'll just turn a video on and they'll be in some church in a, in a town I don't even know anything about and they'll be praising God. And I'm like, man, that looks awesome. They look like they're having a wonderful time in the Lord. And I feel like I would fit right in there, you know, with them. And that's why uh, we know that, again, God does things in order. And while we are individually in our little lane, so to speak, sometimes it helps to understand that, you know, there's an order to God's church. And when you see these similarities, we should praise God for that and thank God for that. And we should also not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as the Bible tells us, especially as we see the day drawing near as times get worse and worse. I mean, I don't know about you, but you know, we're living in perilous times. Our kids went to a craft activity this morning and there was a, there was like a dog guard dog there, you know, at, at a home improvement store, looked like a bomb sniffing dog. I mean, just at the, you know, the kids craft hour, I don't, I didn't know we needed the canine for that. I mean, we're living in perilous times. The inflation, the economy has gone mad. It is good to be in God's house. And again, God created that just like he created the world. He created dry land. He created us. He created a place for us to worship and he created a format. He created that day of rest that I spoke about, uh, you know, at length here in the last few episodes. So God created that. Now, what else did God create? Well, he created you with unique talents and skills. He created you with a unique personality and all of these, these attributes can be used to serve the Lord if you so choose. He's not going to force your hand, but certainly he created you with that in mind, that he created you with a plan in mind. If you're really good with numbers, you know, maybe he created you thinking you might be the bookkeeper at the local church. You know, maybe you can sing your heart out. Maybe he created you thinking that you were going to help lead the choir or, you know, or sing the special song or, or be a recording artist for him. You know, maybe you got a great sense of humor. Maybe God created you to be a comedian and enlighten lighten things up and to be a Christian comedian and, and so forth. And to use that humor and storytelling and media and so forth, you know, God has a plan for everyone and everybody can and should be used by God if they're willing to submit to him. And a lot of times, why don't we want to submit to God? Because of unbelief. People simply don't really believe or they don't really make God a priority to seek him out. They walk around in what's called this like willful ignorance and we get into Genesis 2, 4, and we're told God made it in the day that the Lord God made the heaven and the earth. The Lord, capital L, Lord. You know, what does it mean to be Lord? It's like commander of all, king of all, amen. The Lord, the same Lord that comes down and gives vengeance and revelation, that's the same Lord that made everything on this earth. We learned that in uh, John chapter 1. And so that should help us be motivated to seek his will for our lives in all ways. Hey, maybe you're run down today. Maybe you're tired today. Maybe you're struggling today. Make this the day that you seek the Lord in prayer and say, God, you know, Genesis 2 tells me that you made all things. What what would you have me to do with the skills you've given me, with the, with the church you've placed me in? Or if you're not in a church, where would you have me to go? Start praying to the Lord and seeking him. You know, be be relentless. Amen. Wasn't it Jacob was wrestling there with God who was in the form of an angel and he wouldn't let him go. He said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. You know, that's a, another Old Testament verse. Well, we need to be like that with God. We're praying and we're seeking him and we're, we're persistent, asking the Lord to guide us and to show us what he'd have us to do and, and what he'd have us to do with the order that he's created around us. And I'll say this, and, and, and we'll wrap up with this verse, look at, not just who you are, but as I just mentioned, look around. Amen. Where did God put you? Where did he plant you? What, what, you know, who is in your circle or your family, you know, your, your, your sphere of influence, if you will, look at what God is doing there and see what God would have you to do to reach those folks. Amen. And it may not be what you might've thought, you know, God, who can know the mind of the Lord? The Bible says we surely can't. His ways are higher than our ways, much higher. Amen. 
but he loves us and he has a plan for us and he's a God of order, a God of sequence, and we simply need to seek the Lord here today to see what he'd have us to do. Tune in next time. Thank you for listening. God bless. Amen. Thanks for spending time with us today at the cafe. We would love to hear from you. You can email Brother Clark directly at clark at enduringpromise.org. See you again tomorrow. Same time, same place.